church. Just something that I've been thinking a lot about within the last day or so has been around, um, I don't know if it was, yesterday was Tuesday, so I don't remember exactly what I was doing, but I just said, Lord, you know what, I, I want to know, and it was just interesting the way I said it to him, like, Lord, I, I, I just want to continue to grow to understand what's real, you know, like, like what, what real is. You know, sometimes it's interesting, you can, you, can, you can be watching a movie, and you can get so into the movie and kind of what's happening into it, that you're almost feeling what's going on in the movie, like, right? Like you, you're, I mean, that's why people get upset when they watch movies and all this stuff because they're way too deep into what's going on in there, right? Which is obviously, it's not necessary, but, um, you know, but, but obviously that's not real, right? In the, in the same way that, you know, there are many things that people worry about that are not real. There are things that we concern ourselves about, that we depress ourselves about that are, are not real. So, so I, you know, I didn't think it all that when I said that to the Lord. I said, Lord, I just want to continue to grow in the knowledge of what's real. And, and I said that, and it, it's interesting, like several hours later, several hours later, I was just walking, walking upstairs, and actually, actually I wrote it down. Um, as, I was, as I was walking upstairs, I... Uh, he, he, and, and it's interesting because, you know, obviously there are things that, there are things that uh, the Lord shows you and brings thoughts up into your heart. And then there's things that you feel like you hear a lot clearer than just a thought. But, uh, but I wrote this down. Now, keep in mind, I had told the Lord just like two or three hours before that. I just said, Lord, I just want to grow in the knowledge of what's real, just knowing what's real. And I wrote that down. I wrote down knowing what is real. And then, and then what, I think I was going up, up the stairs and and it was, um, know the truth and you will know what's real, right? Know the truth and you will know what's real. And, and immediately, you know, the verse that came to my mind was Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 21. And if you want to turn there, we can. But Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 21 says, uh, If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, right? So what is real is is what the real that I was talking about to the Lord, right, is not just what's real, in other words, that's happening. And obviously he knew what I was thinking about because what I was thinking about is, in other words, it's what's um, a bad way to say it is probably what is most real, right? Like you can be experiencing something here that's actually really happening to you. But there's a greater reality than even what you're going through here. In other words, like, like I can, which, which really is to say there is a truth right, a truth in Christ, right, and because, and because of that truth in Jesus, I'm, I would be able to see this circumstance that I'm going through right now clearer, right, and maybe that goes along with that little meme, or I don't even know what we call those, but that, the picture with the, the little phrase, I think, that came from a message that we have out there on Instagram or on social media, but, but um, it, it was somewhere along the lines, kind of like, like, like knowing the Lord doesn't, it's not like he's, he's, uh, saying that what you're going through is not real, but helps you see what you're going through in, um, helps you understand or perceive what you're going through, something somewhere along those lines. But, but basically, you know, th that's kind of the same, same sort of topic here is that, that um, as, as you know, like, like the reason why that answer came like that, and I believe, I, I understand what he's saying, is that, that if you know the truth, then, then you'll know what the reality is. So there is a reality about every single Christian that we are not all acquainted with, right? Like, in other words, we don't really know ourselves completely, right? That, that's the easiest way to say it. You don't, we, you don't know yourself entirely because you don't know Jesus entirely. And when you know Jesus entirely, you would know the new creation that you have made, been made. In other words, the new you. You would understand who the new you is, right? And obviously, knowing the real you is knowing Christ and knowing him obviously would eliminate all of that stuff, right? Because there is no fear when, you, when your heart is perfected in the knowledge of Christ, right? There is no fear there because, because obviously Jesus does not have fearful thoughts, right? There's nothing that the Lord fears, right? Because he is above all things. So there's nothing, right? He's above all things. He has power over all things. He has authority over all things. But those same things have been communicated to us. So when we, the more and more that we think, like we were saying before, in line with how the Lord thinks, when his thoughts are our thoughts, right? Obviously then, you know, in his ways are our ways. What we, what we begin to understand is you begin to really understand the greatest reality of a circumstance, right? So, so then it is, it's not a, a thing about, well, this is really happening, but yeah, this is occurring, but I can see it properly, right? You can, you can discern, you can judge 
a situation properly, when something occurs, but there's a fix for that, then there's a fix for it, right? When, if, if something occurs, if, you, if you're suffering with a sickness, with a disease, with a pain, something in your joints, something in your back, something right in your body, something going on with your, with your physical body that is of this world, right? We learn, obviously, the greater reality of the power that we have towards health on the inside of us, right? The, li- the power of life that we have in us because of the Spirit of God in us, and, right? And you understand, okay, Lord, you... You came, right, and you suffered on the cross in order to give us life, right? So the shepherd came and died for the sheep so the sheep may have life, right, as he has life today. So... So, so that verse was really good, but I, but I, I want to try and do this, and, and, and this is not going to go very long, but I just want to bring us up, if we can, to verse number 15, and then just come down. We were in verse 21 where we read that, but it's a cool thing, just so you can see the whole thought, right? What I had told the Lord is just, just learning more of what is real, which I, my, the reference that I was making about that was to truth, right? And, but, but, and that's how his response came, right? That you know the truth and then you'll know what's real. You'll know, you know, you know what, the, what the reality is about you. You can be experiencing something in this world, but there is a reality about me. There is, about, there is who I am, what I have, and what my inheritance is, right? So, so there, there, there's a, a truth about that, right? Which is what I want to grow more and more in, and we all want to grow in. So if you go back up to verse 15, and, and actually... Um, Sorry, verse 13, you know, here, so, see, the Lord is so cool. Because verse 13, actually, because remember I told you, I don't know exactly how this ties in, what we're saying now to us becoming more united the way we were just talking at the, at the beginning. Well, well, it's funny because in verse 13, he actually starts with that. That, that, the, that pastors and teachers, right, in the church is a place for us to come so that we can come, verse 13, to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, right? So, so we, we come, when you come to the unity of the faith, right, you have become more united, right? Because when you come to the unity of the faith, you, not only are, you, are, you united, are we united in spirit, but we have come to the unity of the faith then, which is unity of speaking the same thing, right? The same mind and speaking the same thing. The same mind and speaking the same thing. Um, Right, so there's a reality about, I just thought of this a second ago, but there's a reality about the fact that we have the mind of Christ, right? That's the reality, right? So we, 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 our thoughts are not perfectly in line with the mind of Christ that we have, but we do have, right, the Christ in us that knows all things, right? All the things of God are on the inside of us. It's just cool that, right? All of the knowledge of God is in us. All the knowledge of God is in us. So, so he says, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children, right? So we're, not, we're no longer then immature. People that are children in their understanding, right, suffer needlessly, go through problems needlessly, suffer divisions, and, 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 and go through things in relationships that we don't have to really go through, right? It's not, it's not a needful thing that we have to go through these things, right? We go through them because what we're lacking is that unity of the faith, right? Which obviously, the, every day that goes by, as we know Christ more, that's what's, that's what's going away, right? The, 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 I'll say it like this, the unlike-mindedness is going away, and the like-mindedness, right? The unity of the faith is what it's being replaced with. Verse number 14 it says, um, sorry, the latter part of verse 13, sorry, Andre. It says, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So obviously, you know where it is that your mind is going, right? To, to the mind of Christ is where our mind is going. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness, craftiness of deceitful plotting. But it says, speaking the truth. And that, that's really where the Lord started, where he had brought me back to, is know the truth and you'll know what's real, right? Where, where he, he says, speaking the truth in love. So the, in other words, the, the ministry is established to be able to train people for the work of the ministry, to bring us to the unity of the faith, right? In other words, that is the job of every church. The job of every church is, is to bring its people, right, to the unity of the faith so that we can all, right, all be, be brought to that, uni- to that same unity by that same doctrine, by that same teaching of Christ, right? And, but verse 15 says, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him 
who is the head, Christ. Now, obviously, that does not mean speaking the truth in a way that's so nice with a very monotone voice and speaking, you know, very likably to everyone, right? Speaking the, speaking the truth in love there, I, I believe really it's more in reference to speak, speaking, and, and actually, th there is a translation. I'll just, I'll read this to you real quick for what it's worth. Verse, verse number 15, the Young's literal says, and being true in love, we may increase to him in all things who is the head, the Christ, right? That's the Young literal's translation. So, so there's more that we can gain there. I, I, won't, I won't stay there very long. But, um, but we know that what we're growing in is the knowledge of the truth, right? So it speaks of the fivefold ministry first or the, or the ministry that, that the Lord has established within the church for the purpose of the unity of the faith. And then it says here, and, and the unity of faith obviously comes, faith happens through the hearing of the truth, which is the point that he's making here. And then verse 16 says, from whom the whole body, and he's still speaking about his church, right? Not just Reformed Church, but the entirety of the church, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part uh, does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love, right? And I, I know that that's a mouthful, but you really, you really see what it is that he's doing and you see the importance of this church, right, and of the gospel. Because listen to this, right? We, we have come to a place where we really, we understand what the gospel is. There's even a bunch of the church that really doesn't even understand the gospel. They, they, don't, they can't really put their words around this right here is the gospel. But the gospel is the knowledge of Christ, right? The good news of what Jesus Christ already finished for us, right? And the glory that followed everything that he accomplished. That's, that's the gospel, right? So because we've come to a place where we understand that, we understand the, the centrality in our preaching of Jesus Christ and him crucified and that glory that we possess today, the, the, you understand how that singles you out as a church, right? How that singles you out as a church to say, okay, you're doing, like we're not saying that every single thing that we say is perfect, right? Because we're, we're also growing. But the thing is, but we have found, and, and this is something that the Lord was growing us up in for years now, right? We have found the one thing, right? We have found the one thing that is needful for the church to hear. The one thing that is needful for the church to concentrate itself on, right? So then, so then it just makes perfect sense, right? That if out of all the church and everything that you hear, you don't hear this centrality, then somebody has to be the tip of that spear, right? Somebody has to be the tip of that spear. And, and, and because of whatever type of silly thinking, people would want to say, well, yeah, but that has to, you have to leave that up to ministries that are mega churches or whatever. Listen, it is not about the size of your church. It, it is about the correctness, right, of the truth that's being preached. In other words, it is about the truth being preached. It is about the gospel. It's about the message, right? So, so, so th then, leaving that on the side of saying, just go into verse 17. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their minds. So he makes a point of saying all of these things, right, about how, what the job of the church is, how that brings unity. He desires that the church would be of the same mind and speak the same thing, right, for the unity of that church. And then he said, right, that, that beside the fact that it would be for the unity, it, it's also for the operation and the working within the church. In other words, that each person then, the way that the work of the ministry is done is that as each person begins to allow the Spirit of God to work in and through them, in other words, as they begin to know the Lord more, the manifestation of the Spirit will be, what, will be working within them. And that's what he calls that effectual working. In in other words, that, that you will have the effectual working of the power of God within you that Ephesians 1 talks about, right? The effectual working of the power of God, which is according to the power that raised him from the dead, right? That power will then be at work in you. And as, as we allow that power then to be at work in us, then the body begins then to edify itself, right? Because now it's not just the the pastors and the teachers right that are edifying the body of christ to bring it to the unity of the faith but then each part begins to sub, begins to supply and work for itself right right for the benefit of the same exact body right for the same body of christ each part continues to do the exact same thing then right so so the same effect that, that the lord desires the pastors to have upon the congregation it's the same effect that the, that the lord desires for the people within the congregation to have among themselves so it edifies itself right the body begins to edify itself 
So, so, and then he goes from there to say, because we have no need to walk like the rest of the Gentiles walk, the way people of this world walk in the futility of their mind. And the point that he's making there is devoid of truth. In other words, what he's saying is, you know a lot, right? There's a lot that you know. So your mind, you don't walk and no, have no need to live in the futility of your mind because your mind is not devoid of truth. There is, there is a measure, and that's why he says, according to the measure, According to the measure, he says that each part supplies because people within, the, within congregations around the world are at different levels of what they understand, right? So, and what he's saying there is, though, with that different level of understanding, though, you, you still know there is truth that you know. There is truth that, you know, there are things that you understand. So we have no need ever to walk in the futility of our minds. And that's the point that he's making there. Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God. In other words, these are all opposites of the church, right? We should never walk alienated from the life of God, never. But yet you still see that, right? In many ways in our lives, you see, you, you see us walk almost like, that, like, it, like it doesn't belong to us, like we can't take from it, right? We should, never, we should never think like that, right? The Lord wants to change our thinking so we never feel alienated from the life of God, but feel right at home with it and partaking from the life of God, right? And then he says, because of the ignorance that is in them, right, which we do not suffer from, right? We, we do not suffer, we, well, let, let me say it this way. We don't suffer from futility because of the ignorance, right? There are things that we don't know that we are ignorant of still, right? But we don't, we don't need to walk in the futility of the, our minds because there is truth that we know, right? And the truth that we know is that truth that we walk in. The truth that we know is the, work, the, the truth that we walk in. It says, because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness, to work, work all uncleanness with greediness, and this is where I'll end right here, right? But you have not so learned, and this is where we started, right? But you speak, if you can hear the Lord just say this to you, right? Because I hear him saying it to me. He's saying, you know what, Jose, this is not how you have learned me, though, right? This is not how you've heard, learned me, because you have indeed heard me, and you have been taught by me, because the truth is in me, right? So that's the answer, right, to what I said to the Lord. I, I said, Lord, that's what I want to grow in, and I want to continue to grow in that which is real. And, and, and his response to me is, you know what? You, you have indeed, you have learned me, and you have been taught by me, and the truth is in me. So you keep knowing me, and you will, you will see the reality of who you are completely, right? So it's just a cool thing to see, you know, cool thing to see why it is that the Lord has put us in the position that he's put us in, and that is because we have chosen to leave everything else aside, right, and be renewed in the spirit of our mind, right? We have chosen, to, you know what, regardless of whatever we were taught in the past, and we are not downing uh, downing any person who taught us things because it, it, as, as many things as we may think, well, we don't really agree with that doctrine now, but there were many things that were taught right to us because obviously we were saved. I was saved years ago, right? But so it's not downing everything that, be, that have been taught and bad-mouthing any previous teachers, but giving thanks to God for where we are now and not discounting what it is that we know in the position the Lord has given us, right? To be able to spread this gospel right here, right? The good news about Jesus Christ and the glory that we present day live in today. Mm -hmm.